Room here, and welcome to a new series, Game Dev Tycoon. Now first of all I just want to say thank you for watching, and I also quickly want to say, if you have any suggestions or tips, feel free to leave them in the comments section. Now, I have played this game before, I've played it quite a bit actually, uh, around, actually I don't even know how many hours, so I have some experience but by no means I'm no expert. So, uh, Game Dev Tycoon is a game which you can buy on Steam for around, I don't know, I think six, six pounds. It's a really fun game, as you'll see. Uh, first of all, I want to make the episodes around 20 minutes long, and I will be uploading every Wednesday. That's the Game Dev Tycoon schedule. Unless something happens, that's, uh, then we'll be uploading on a different day. But we should be uploading on a Wednesday. So, as the name suggests, Game Dev Tycoon is a game about creating your own game company and making games. So, uh, we're going to start, and we need a company name. So I'm thinking uh, something along maybe the lines of the gaming room, since that's what our channel is called. So, let's make the gaming room. And uh, the player name is just going to be Jack no real reason and now we're just going to customize our guy because that's what you need to do at the start of game dev tycoon and i suppose that's good the gaming room and we're going to probably play for 35 years that is the recommended so uh let's get into it uh unlock hints uh if you played this game before you get hints so i don't know i think i'm just for the purpose of YouTube, I'm not going to have hints, just to make it more entertaining. I mean, roughly I remember how to play this game. Uh, now it's just showing me the tutorial. Uh, it's not really important. It's a very easy game to play. You start going... Da -da -da -da. Yep. And you start on your own garage. This is... Uh, basically, you start in the 80s supporter. Yes. Start up game. You, there's different achievements that you can unlock. But uh, you start the game, let me just pause it for a quick sec. There we go. Uh, so you start roughly around the 80s and you move forwards in time until the more recent PlayStation 4 consoles and stuff. But we'll be starting out and uh, let's go. So one of the first things which you do is where well, we develop a new game and the tutorial is just, I already know how to do this so I'm not going to read the tutorial if you guys want to just feel free to pause the video and uh, read it so the first thing which I usually do when I play Game Dev Tycoon is I pick a topic and a genre then I'll pick a name depending so we don't really have that great topics also by the way I'm not running any mods if you're interested I, I might do a series in the future of mods that's just the vanilla game uh, so I mean all of these are pretty terrible but I think I'm leaning towards a pirate RPG I mean that sounds terrible and uh, also one thing which you should know about Game Dev Tycoon is it doesn't have the real names so this is a Commodore 64 but it's called a Governor 64 instead of Nintendo they have an Invento and uh, instead of Sony they have Vony etc so uh, that's one thing you should know so we're gonna start probably and make this game on a PC because it's cheaper even though it has less market share I never really when I play myself I never really make any games on the Govador 64 anyway so I'm just gonna go with PC and let's call it uh, I don't know Pirates of RPG land. Uh, no. Pirates of the Caribbean. Maybe Pirate Adventure. I know that's a pretty sucky name, but right now I can't come up with anything better. And let's go with 2D graphics. It would be more expensive, but that tends to be better. Also, the name of the game doesn't really matter. It doesn't sell, sell based on a game. Again, if you want to read, just pause the video. I already pretty much know how this works. So an RPG game, usually you want very good story, quite good gameplay, and the engine doesn't matter. Because every single uh, 
type like action would have a better engine and uh, less of story and quest. And so, the more you play this game, the more you remember. I mean, I don't know every single type, if you get what I mean, how they exactly work, but they are, there's plenty of uh, guides if you want to uh, know exactly, because uh, if you make the game sort of, uh, you get reviews, so after you make the game, your game will be reviewed, and if it gets really bad reviews, it might not sell as well. So you want to make your game as good as possible, so I'm going to put my gameplay about here, give it quite good story and quest as it is an RPG game. And he's just gonna drum out the code, make sure everything's good. And we get to the next part. There are three uh, parts where tutorial. Yep, 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 yep. There are three parts uh, to building a game. Each part will have sort of slightly different things. That one was more about uh, how the game will be. This one's more about how it will be built. So. Uh, in an RPG game, I suppose you want good artificial intelligence and probably good dialogues. Hmm, you want probably the level design to be good as well. I, I can't, I don't, can't really remember. Plus, I don't really. When I play Game Dave Tycoon, I have my very set style, which I know works. It's basically just making action games for the PC, which are mature because they tend to sell better. But at the beginning of the game, you don't get age ratings yet. That comes later on in the game. But uh, for the purpose of the video, I think I'll be trying to play, not in my sort of way, but in a sort of more interesting, because my method can get a bit boring, because I just make action games. So, uh, I don't know. Let's put level design maybe higher. I feel that would be the most important. Dialogues, they're still pretty important. And AI... I think the AI mm, is difficult with this one. I think I'll just leave it like this. I mean, the first game usually doesn't sell very well anyway, but we don't want to go bankrupt straight away. I've never actually been bankrupt in Game Dev Tycoon, so I hope this won't be my first time. Uh, again, tutorial. Uh, sorry about the Steam request and messages they'll be popping up but anyway for this I think we want quite good graphics or oh, to be fair RPG games they usually want good world design and fairly good sound I mean we'll leave graphics somewhere around here anyway because you want decent graphics so I think that's good I'm really not expecting much of this game as long as it sells really so we finished the game uh, yep, 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 yep. So when you press the finish button, it uh, releases the game, but I don't quite want to do that yet. I want to get the bugs out first. Don't want to be a developer like EA. <laughs> Ship off my game with a load of bugs. Let's not do that. Um, thank you. Yay. Uh, if you click, it tends to go through the thing quicker. So, everything's a level one so far. Tutorial. <sighs> I can't really turn off the tutorial. Well, I can, but I just chose not to. So one thing which we want to do is generate a game report. That's something you want to do after every game. And that basically will tell you uh, what you could do better next time if you make an adventure game. And uh, so on and so forth. We got a 6. A 6. Uh, I, was, I was roughly expecting around a 6. A 5. I wasn't really expecting 7s. Uh, seven. Okay, you know what? That's decent. I mean, let's see. Yeah. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Tutorial. Uh, again. So we got a six overall. The game cost us thirty-one thousand to make, and now it's going to start selling. Hopefully, we make a profit on it. Uh, and this, and you get news updates. This is just telling us that the gaming room, a newcomer in the gaming industry, just released Pirate Adventure. That's cool. So let's see how we sell. We sold so far 2.7 thousand copies. I embedded the charts at number 44. That's pretty decent. Uh, game by looking at the sales graph. Yep, uh, this is the sales graph. There's a lot happening right now, so I'm just trying to explain. It's pretty difficult. But um, here's how many fans you have. We currently have 10 fans. 
you will get thousands of fans, you can gain fans, you can lose them, it's pretty normal. This is the year count, we're on year one currently. Here's the cash, I mean this is all pretty self-explanatory but, you know, this is the sales chart and uh, how much fans, money we make and stuff. So, uh, we just finished the report and we're going to find out. This is pretty important, Pyro and RPG is a good combination and world design is very important, so next time if we make an RPG we want to make sure that the world design is, uh, we put it up all the way. So we know that. Uh, so one thing which you also do after making games and stuff, uh, you gain the research points and you want to use those research points to upgrade your, well just everything. You can uh, get new topics, make custom engines for example, you could get better graphics. But for now we just want to, I think, research some new topics. We're going to go for zombie. Because uh, there's many many topics which you can unlock and certain topics are better than others. I feel the topics we have right now aren't particularly great. And we sold 10,000 units for our first game, that's pretty cool. Let's see how our game has actually done. So we have made an income of 70,000, that's a profit of 39,000 so far. Eventually the game will be taken off sale, they'll get taken automatically, I can't take it off sale. We have found zombies, let's uh, do a bit more research, find maybe another topic. Let's go for ninja, I mean I doubt we'll make a ninja game but, you know why not. So we gained one fan, so altogether we now have 40 fans, the more fans you have, the more people will sort of buy your game because fans are more likely to buy your game which is good so you want to be gaining fans. So we have Research Ninja. I think it's time to make another game since we don't have enough research points to do anything else. I think I'm going to go for a zombie uh, action game actually on the PC again and call it hmm, zombie I'm thinking of like maybe Daisy. I don't really want to copy other game names, so I'm thinking DayZ. <laughs> I think that's quite good. So again, we're going to go for the 2D graphics. We don't have 2D graphics version 2 yet, but um, in order to get them, we have to continuously make games on 2D graphics version 1, and then eventually we can get version 2, etc. So, uh, for action games, you don't want a story and quest at all. You want very high engine and fairly decent gameplay. That's generally how action games work. In Game Dev Tycoon anyway. In real life they work like that as well. So Pyro Adventure is now off the market. It sold 12,000 units and it generated 87,000 in sales. That's better than I was expecting. I was expecting around 60,000 so hopefully this game can do uh, well. Uh, also once you get money you can move into a different office right now I'm just making games in the garage and eventually I'll hopefully have a huge office unless we go bankrupt so uh, I always like to do this just put it, them all the way up to zero and then go off of that so we want probably good artificial intelligence and quite high level design possibly probably don't want dialogues too much an action game you know you're just shooting doing whatever just slicing with your sword, you're not exactly going to be talking to some NPC about hey there's a zombie infestation, could you please kill the zombies? You'll be like yeah I know, I'm trying to kill them. So, <laughs> yeah. Industry news, experts are saying the Governor 64 will overtake the PC. Uh, spoiler alert, it never does. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. So we want really good graphics and we want decent sound. I'm not too fussed about world design. You generally, uh, when designing a game, you don't, in Game of Tycoon, you don't really want to do something like this. You want to do it more like this, so you leave it all the way at the bottom. And this is just because that's just how Game Dev Tycoon works. It's sort of strange. You'd expect that you'd want some world design, but no. You want one bar, usually just nothing done to it, and that tends to. Uh, just do better. So, yeah. So, uh, 
we have finished the game, but let's just get the bugs out the way, and now we can publish it. We've got some new records, very nice, and we are not really too close to level 2 just yet. We're going to have to make one or two more games, probably. Yay, create a game with good topic genre combination, so we got a new achievement. That's awesome. And a game review came in, hopefully it does well. I'm seeing a lot of 6, 7, 6. I was hoping for a little better this time. 6, 7, 7, okay, that's not bad. Well, we'll 7, 6, 5, oh, 6. Okay, can we get a 8, maybe a 9, no, 5. Ah, that... I was really hoping that was going to go better. Let's just see how we did. Another 6, so we have made two 6s so far. This game cost us the exact same as the other one, so hopefully we can earn our money back. Let's just generate a game report, see what we did well, what we did wrong. I mean, again, I don't remember everything about Game Dev Tycoon, but I roughly remember how to do things. So we ranked at number 61, which I think is not exactly an improvement. Um, but zombies and action is very good. Engine is very important, but we already knew this. So we have 24 research points. We could save up to get a custom game engine. But hmm, yeah, I think we're actually going to do that. Let's just make another game for now. Let's go for... I, I've n I don't really like the cyberpunk of vocabulary. I think I'm going to go towards maybe a ninja adventure. I suppose we could. And again, we're probably going to go for the PC. I mean, the governor has a larger market share, but the development cost is higher. So let's just go with the PC and we're going to call it Ninja. Wow, I'm not very good at coming up with names, you may have noticed. So there's going to be pretty reoccurring that the names are just going to be atrocious. And I'm sorry, uh, what could we call the game? Maybe uh, Ninja, Ninja Brawl. I think that's decent. And that's how you spell Brawl, I believe. Should be. Right, let's go for 2D graphics again. Uh, industry news. Uh, the industry news can be actually quite important. So, uh, rumors are saying that a Japanese company called Nintendo, that's Nintendo, uh, world known for Dinky King, that's Donkey Kong, um, are making their own console. And yes, they are. So, uh, for now, we only have the PC and the Governor 64, but eventually there will be consoles like the Super, NES, and stuff. So, an adventure game. An adventure game usually, again, want good story and quest and gameplay. I don't think... An adventure. You would think that an adventure would have fairly decent gameplay and good story and quest. The engines are usually quite buggy. Um, I think we should... I think this would be good. Let's just go for that. So DayZ is still not off the market. Let's actually see how DayZ did. So we made a profit on DayZ, not as big as on Pirate Adventure, and I doubt you'll get there. But, you know, a profit is a profit, as long as we're not making a loss, it's decent. So now, uh, I don't really know. This is quite tricky. Um, I think I'm going to go for dialogues. I mean, what would you put in an adventure game? Probably <sighs> quite good level design, I'd expect, in an adventure. The AI would be probably decent, and the dialogues would probably have to be quite interesting. Since an adventure game is generally based on stuff like that, I would think. And level design will have to be quite good, because adventure games are more exploration based. In, I mean, in an adventure game, you would explore things more. In an action, you wouldn't really care about the environment. You just destroy stuff. Um, so, again, I think world design would probably be a priority. The graphics. Probably not as much. And the sound. But let's just have the graphics around here. And the sound maybe a bit lower around here. Yeah, I think that should be fine. DayZ is still not off the market. We have 90 fans now, that's awesome. Hope Let's just get all those bugs out of the way as we have quite a few. 
because like, again, uh, selling games with bugs in them can lead to, you know, fans being angry. Oh, DayZ is now off the market, sold 11,000 units, generating 83,000 in sales. Again, not bad, not bad. Let's just finish Ninja Brawl. Also, you can edit the name if you decide to change it. We could trash game, which, uh, well, I don't really see why would you trash a game unless you really know you have totally failed, messed up. But I'm not going to trash the game. I'm going to release it. Uh, we're not quite level 2 on anything just yet, but next round, after we make the next game, we probably will be. So, oh, oh industry news. So, Nintendo has made the TES. That's the... And yes, Nintendo Entertainment System. I wonder how many of you actually played on that NES. I have. So actually, uh, put down in the comment section if you have played on the NES. That would be, well, just cool to know how many of you have. So, right. Um, game review hopefully will be better than the last two. Oh, oh. Wow. I wasn't quite expecting it to be this bad. Waste of money, disappointing, meh, wow, um, pretty bad, ah, oh, that's, that's, that's not good, let's generate a game report, let's see where we went wrong, 3.25 average score, that's, well, that's lower than I expected, um, hmm, oh, now we can do contract work, contract work is pretty cool, because uh, what contract work gives you is it gives you extra research points as well as money. So if you need those extra research points so you could get a new game genre or something, you can do them. And contracts have been unlocked, so that's awesome. Let's actually do a contract after this analysis. Ninja and Adventure's okay combination. Hmm. Gameplay is not very important and Adventure PC is great, so Adventure games are good. We should definitely make them on a PC. Let's in fact do some contract work. Contract is awesome. Uh, for now, the contract work will be very simple. As you get further into the game, the contract work gets more complicated and stuff. Let's just do something uh, that's quite easy. I think logo animation looks the easiest. Let's accept contract. Basically, you have to uh, fill these up in the time that you have left. Uh, so Game Dev Tycoon, the developers, are just saying thanks for supporting the game so that's pretty cool I uh, I actually really like supporting uh, game companies which are just smaller you know not your mass game companies like EA so I, I I enjoy playing these games and I will probably continue to do so so that's what you should expect from me in uh, the gaming room some just games which are probably smaller you may not even have heard of most of them so that's pretty awesome so i'm going to be ending the episode off soon uh just want to finish this probably logo animation oh, we didn't manage to make the contract and uh, if you don't manage to make contracts you get money penalties also and uh, as your skills go up it'll be easier for you to complete a contract but anyway uh, contract work yes it's just telling me that maybe next time i should uh, make sure that I gain my skills a bit more before I do my next contract but anyway I would just like to say thank you very much for watching guys I hope you enjoyed the episode tell me in the comment section what you thought of it tell me if there's anything you want me to improve and uh, I'll see you for the next one bye